I think I'm going to use this one. All right. John chapter number one. I'm just going to look at a couple verses here. Um, verse number 29 to start us off says the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, behold, the lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Drop down to verse number 35. And again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he saith unto them, What seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He said unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt and abode with them that day, for it's about the tenth hour. Lord, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you, Lord, for the truth of your word. Father, I pray that tonight you would help us, that we would yield ourselves to you, that we would honor you and glorify you by our lives. But Lord, I pray that you would uh, just minister to us, meet with us here in a very real, a very special way here tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. One of these, I, I want to focus in on what happens here in John chapter 1, down in verse number 35 through 37. John has two disciples with him. And when John declares that Jesus is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world, John's two disciples stop following John and they follow Jesus. One of these disciples, his name is Andrew. Andrew is one person who did not live his life distracted. There's so many things today that are distracting us from what we ought to be paying attention to. The things that we ought to have in our mind and keep our eye on. We are living distracted lives today. Andrew knew that he, what he was looking for. He knew, who, he knew who he was looking for. And when he found him, he made no excuses. He made no reason not to follow him. And you and I would do well to follow his example and not to live distracted lives. Andrew left the ministry of John the Baptist. Not because it was a bad ministry. Not because John the Baptist was a, was a horrible guy or some kind of false teacher. But because John was doing what was right, he was pointing others to the Lord Jesus. Amen. And when, uh, when Andrew saw who it is that, that, uh, that, that John was pointing everyone to, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. He knew he was looking for Jesus, and John pointed him to the Christ, the Messiah. In verse number 41... The Bible says, uh, well, verse number 40, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, we have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. The first thing that Andrew does is he goes and gets his brother, and he introduces his brother to the Lord Jesus. History continues to tell us. More than Scripture does, history tells us that, that after the crucifixion and after the resurrection, Andrew went on to preach the gospel in Russia and, uh, and eventually in Greece, where he led the emperor's wife to Christ and was crucified for that. He was crucified tied upside down to, uh, to a cross that was in the shape of an X. And for two days while he hung upon that cross, he preached the gospel to the crowds and to anyone who would come and, and listen. And many of the crowd got saved. To the extent that the crowd tried to come to his rescue. And Andrew refused their help. His eyes were pointed to heaven. He refused to have them taken away. See, Andrew didn't want to be distracted. Even in death. Even at the very end of his life, he was not distracted on the one thing that he made the main thing, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Distractions. Distractions come and go. One th a couple things about distractions. Number one, there's things that we're easily distracted from. We're easily distracted from the preaching of the gospel. Amen. Witnessing. Passing out tracts. Uh, it's embarrassing to say it, but the church of God has been 
distracted these last few months. Well, we have a very clear command in, in Matthew 28. Go therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Something else we're easily distracted from is Bible reading and study of Scripture. 2 Timothy 2.15 tells us, Study to show thyself approved of unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We ought not be distracted from our reading and from the study of Scripture, from the Word of God. Yeah. It's easily to get it's easy to get distracted in times like this from kindness, forgiveness. Where Ephesians 4:32 tells us, "Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted." Forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. These last few months, we've seen a lot less kindness coming from Christians. We've seen a lot less tenderheartedness. We've seen a lot less forgiveness. It's easy to get distracted from church attendance and from worship of God. Especially when you have such a simple excuse as, well, we're not allowed to meet together. But here we are. Amen. Amen. It's easy to get distracted from things against which, I mean, and, and that one's easy, you know. Hey, listen, there's a law that says we can't meet together right now. Well, that's fine. What about, amen? What about the things against which there is no law? Love. I mean, God tells us this. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. There is no law against being the kind of person that you should be. There is no law against being the Christian that we ought to be today. They can't make a law against that. They can't make a law that says you're not allowed to love someone. It doesn't exist. Instead, we get distracted. It's easy to get distracted from these things. What are the things we're distracted from or the things we're distracted by? There's some things distracting us today. There's some things distracting us right now, like a train going by. <laughs> but in our life, we all not live distracted lives. A distraction, what is a distraction? Distraction is anything that takes your attention off of what it should be on. Hear about things like distracted driving. Well, guess what? Distracted driving is doing anything other than driving. Even for driver comfort. You get in a car accident because you turn down the heat or the AC. I, I know that today you probably turned down the heat a little bit. But... You get in a car accident, turning down the stereo, turning down the, the air conditioning, guess what? You can get a ticket for distracted driving. Looking at the phone, looking at your watch, looking at whatever it might be, you're distracted. You get a ticket for, uh, for being distracted by the traffic that's on the other side of the freeway. You're distracted. If something is taking your attention off of what it should be on, Magicians perform these sleight of hand and magic tricks. And one of the greatest tactics is distraction. It's the wave of a hand or, or, the, or a snap of fingers or words or, or simply eye contact. One of, my, one of my favorite things, I've got several puzzles over in the office that I like to do. And one of the most simple ones is just a simple twist. That's all you have to do. But it's difficult for people to figure out, especially the little kids that come in 
And they say, how do you do this one? And I say, oh yeah, this one, I forget how to do this one. I turn it a little bit and I, and I wait for them and then I'll engage them in, in, in a conversation or I'll, or I'll say their name. And as soon as they lift up, as soon as they look up to me, snap and it's done. Oh look, it's a simple thing. But as soon as you take your eyes off, instantly, as soon as they take their eyes off of it, they snap and it's done. The devil seeks to distract us the same way. We don't have to wander around in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a maze of darkness. We just have to take our eyes off the Lord just for one moment. And we're distracted. Some things that distracted people in Scripture, Matthew chapter 19, tells us of the rich young ruler who was distracted from following Jesus by his much wealth and his great possessions. In Luke chapter number 10, I'm not going to dwell on that one because I know not a whole lot of us have great wealth and great possessions. But our small wealth and little possessions can be a distraction as well. Luke chapter 10, Mary and Martha have the tremendous privilege of hosting the Lord Jesus himself. And Martha was distracted from sitting and listening and learning at the very feet of Jesus. Oh, I can only imagine. If Jesus is coming to your house today, and we'd be in such a frenzy to get everything just right, to get everything just set, that even while the Savior is there desiring the fellowship with us, we're distracted by the work that needs to be done. My friends, ministry can be the same way. You can get distracted by the work of ministry. It happens to many pastors. Distraction of work of the ministry, of robbing them from and distracting them from a real relationship with the Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter number 8, Jesus' disciples. Now listen, this is, this is just so, such amazing. The very disciples of our Lord Jesus, the ones whom Jesus called by name, who were following after him. They got in a boat with Jesus, and they got distracted by the weather. The weather came up, and it was awful. It was awful weather. I don't know if it's as bad weather as we're having right now, but it was awful weather. It was a distraction. And Jesus has come to them and, and, and addresses them and says, oh, oh, ye of little faith. So faithless because of the distraction of the weather. In Matthew chapter 14, another storm, another boat. And Jesus comes walking over to his disciples. Now Peter calls out, says, Lord, if that's you, bid me to come over to you. And he does. He hops out of the boat, walks upon the water, but Peter gets distracted by the waves. Peter gets, got distracted by the waves. In Luke chapter 9, many potential disciples of Jesus were distracted by earthly things. Distracted by family, distracted by traditions. There were some that Jesus took to, Jesus went to and told them, Come and follow me. I said, Well, I, 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 I've got to go. I have a loved one that's, been, that's died. I need to go bury him. I, I've, I've got these things to tend to. I need to go say goodbye. I've got, I, I need, I've got this bill. I've got to sell this stuff. I've got to take care of all these things. It's a distraction. Distracted from following the Lord Jesus by earthly things, by even family, by traditions, things that don't matter for eternity. My friend, it's easy to get distracted. And there's no doubt in my mind, we're living distracted today. We got a lot of things that are ready to distract us from what we should be focusing on. 
We've got a virus that the, the world is trying to distract us with. We've got, uh, we've got red versus blue that we're being distracted with constantly. My friends, it's, a, it's an election year. It's going to be a distraction all year long. I, if you think that that distraction ends uh, on election night, I, I've got news for you. It's going to keep going. The distraction is very real. And, it, and it's going to continue on. Because Satan wants to distract us. Satan wants us to be uh, to, to take our eyes off of the Lord just for a few moments, just for a second. We take our eyes off of Him. Satan can't have our soul. Satan can't have the soul of a Christian, of a believer. Oh, he can sure ruin your life. That's his goal, that's his aim, that's his desire. I want you to find 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. You see an entire list of things here in several verses that God gives to us. It's going to help us ditch the distractions. Ditch the distractions. We have so many things that Satan can use. And, and the truth of the matter is these distractions are, are the wiles of the devil that he talks about in Ephesians chapter number 6. Ephesians 6, we're given the armor of God. We're told to stand against the wiles of the devil. The wiles are distractions. We're told to stand firm against them. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, look, look at verse 4. He says, But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. This is what God desires for each one of us, that we would be ministers. That we minister to others. That we would, on His behalf, carry the gospel. He says there's, there's things that are going against that calling of, uh, uh, that God has on your life. And so he, so he continues here, it, but in all things approving ourselves as ministers of God, number one, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults and labors, in watchings and fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying, and behold we live as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as pure yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. Whew! What is he saying there? He's, what he's giving us is the ways that we can dis ditch the distractions and keep our focus on what God's called us to do, what God's asked us to do. Be a minister of God in all circumstances with pureness. Not being deceitful or using any kind of trickery. In knowledge which comes through the study of the Word of God. In long suffering. Putting up with others. In kindness. I like he follows kindness, long suffering with kindness. It's not just putting up with somebody. It's putting up with them and being kind. It says, by the Holy Spirit. We have to understand that we need the Holy Spirit. We can't just, we, we, when, our, when we are at our wit's end, we need the Holy Spirit all the time. He talks about an unfeigned love. Having a genuine love for all people. 
having a genuine love for others. And not just saying the words, hey, I love you, brother, but reaching out in times of need. I lost my place. Having the word of truth, being honest. Speaking an honest word in sincerity. Having the power of God. Understanding, uh, understanding that, that you must, you must be a minister of God, but you can't on your own. We need the power of God if we're going to do anything for God. Doing right in all things, he calls this an armament. Having the armor, the defense of doing right, both on the right hand and on the left. That in all things, we strive to do what is right first. Do the next right thing. He says here in uh, by, uh, verse number 8, by honor and by dishonor. You know, no matter what other people think of you, you're a minister of God. Amen. And then he goes on to say, by evil report and by good report. In other words, no matter what others say of you, no matter what they think of you, you're going to do right. No matter what they say of you, you're going to do right. He goes on to say, uh, as deceivers, and yet you're true. So no matter what others believe you to be. And that's how this works. To, this, that's, how these, uh, that's how Satan will, will distract us. He'll send someone who says, no, you're not. You're, you're being dishonorable. No, wait a minute. I'm doing what's right. And then they'll spread that false report. Spreading lies. And then continuing on, he says... Uh, says as, as unknown and yet well known whether you have a position that is a position of popularity or whether you're anonymous just do the right do the next right thing you're a minister of God whether everybody in the world knows about it or whether it's just you you're a minister of God continue continue on without the distractions even if it comes to giving your own life because we can we can only gain eternal life. It says here, in, uh, as dying, and yet behold, we live. Even as dying, even if it comes to the point where you give your own life. Because the only thing that you can do is continue living. Even when we're chastened to the point where we wish we were dead. He says, as chastened and not killed. And in times of sorrow, we have a rejoicing. Look, verse number 10, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing. Isn't that, it's an amazing thing that Christians can come to a place of such deep sorrow in their life and yet rejoice. Amen. Something that the world cannot comprehend. In times of sorrow, we rejoice. In times of poverty, we understand that we are indeed rich as having nothing yet possessing all things so how can you possess all things my friend when Christ is your all in all the entire world is his God tells us as we've been studying in the book of Revelation we will be joint heirs with him when uh, when, when uh, at the end of times we're joint heirs with the Lord Jesus co-equal in that position. We talked about that on Wednesday night. So I suppose for us tonight, the question is, are we resisting the devil and his distractions? It's easy to live a distracted life. It's easy to get distracted by what's going on around us. It's easy to get distracted by, the, by all of the movement, all of the commotion, all of the things going on. My friends, I'll be honest with you, most of the things that we're hearing most about, they're all just distractions. It's distraction. Oh, look over here. Oh, we're messing with things over on this side. No, 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 look over here. 
We're messing with everything over here. It's a distraction. The devil seeks to distract us the same way. Are you resisting the devil and his distractions? Are you continuing in the things that truly matter to God? Keep your eyes fixed upon Him and what God's called you to do, what you're supposed to be doing. What has God called you to do? And now what's keeping you from continuing on in that thing? God's called us to continue on. By God's grace, we'll continue on as a church here. We'll continue having services. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know what it's going to look like. But we'll keep going. Amen. Make the adjustments that we can. We'll add more lights if we need to. Some people are using their lights. We'll add more lights. We'll add lights till, it's, till we get a sunburn leaving out of here. Amen. We're just going to keep going. Hey, in fact, I've got my lights up here. I, we're just going to keep going. And in fact, I, I can't read without them. Come to find out, I'm glad I brought them. We can't afford to be distracted. My friend, you cannot afford in your own life personally to be distracted from your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to continue to allow God to be the most important thing in our life. The most important relationship, relationship number one, the Lord Jesus. Amen. Our reason for being, the Lord Jesus. Our motivation every day, the Lord Jesus. When's the last time we just stopped and asked God, what would you have me do? If we haven't been asking Him, we've been distracted. Let's maintain a relationship with God that's it's not been distracted by the world. Father, thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you for these folks who gathered here together tonight. Oh Lord, it's going to take us a while to get accustomed to this setting and doing things this way. Oh Lord, I believe you're in this thing. And I believe that this is what you would have us to do. And I believe we just want to keep, keep, keep going on. We need to add to it. So, Lord, I pray that you would give us the wisdom, the determination just to keep going, to follow you, to seek your word, to seek your wisdom. Lord, I pray that you would help us in it. I pray, Lord, that you'd give us wisdom as we seek to add even more services. This Wednesday night, our children need to meet together. They need to continue their study of your word. We need your wisdom. Lord, help us as a church not be distracted. Oh, Lord, help us as individuals tonight in our relationship with you not to be distracted. I pray for the one here tonight who's been met and confronted face to face with the very thing that they've allowed to distract them. Lord, I pray you give them courage to fight Satan on them. Pray, Lord, that you give them the, the strength to stand up against the devil, to put that thing away. I pray, Lord, tonight for the one who's been challenged by your word to continue that relationship with you, to make it the most important thing. Pray, Lord, tonight for the one who maybe doesn't know you as Savior. Well, the idea of being joyful in times of sorrow is foreign. Or being distracted and, and, and imagining that a, a life lived for the Lord Jesus is not worth it. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would draw them to you. Father, I pray that tonight as we leave from this place, as we pick up our, our chair and as we leave from here, 
that we would not leave the truth that we've heard here tonight on this property, but that we would take it with us deep-seated in our heart, that we would cover it over with the determination to allow it to take root, to grow, to spring up within us. Lord, tonight I pray for each one who's here. I pray, Lord, tonight that you would be honored and glorified by our lives. I pray, Lord, we'd have the determination to turn loose of anything and everything that's distracting us from you and what you've called us to tonight. Lord, I pray as we leave from this place that you would take us home safely, that you bring us back again at our next meeting time, and that we would, then that we would from, from here on out, we would just determine to honor you and glorify you with our lives. For we love you tonight. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.